and the the title topic of the show and headlining this segment. Why do you want to share a government with these people? It's a question I've often asked. I think more people are more open to this idea, but it's something that I felt a need to not just my audience, any audience for that matter, to really take into consideration as they look at the landscape of what we have right now in the world or more so in this country, the people that you actually share a government with. I do all these videos about people who have made it clear that they're in it to control you. They're a little authoritarian, little, little, little shit. Sometimes they will f- match their fraud humanitarian efforts with that, and they do that often. I need to control you for the sake of giving you free this, stuff like that. I need to use aggression upon you in order to build more roads, stuff like that. But they're still authoritarian little shits nonetheless. And I think often we get so caught up because people look at the status quo and I would argue that and I'm going to say some bold things here in a little bit. But I would argue that a lot of people who get in the way of liberty, it seems that their their motive there, whether they they might not know it. So let's say that effectively it's the same thing. Well, it's re- it's resulting in just that. Right. It's resulting in them protecting and saving and salvaging the status quo. Often those that are in the way of liberty, those of that I'm talking about, they're guys that would like to think that they value that. They value liberty. Sometimes they call themselves conservatives. Sometimes they even call themselves libertarian. And what it is is they seem to exist to protect what already exists. And what already exists has been then utilized to use aggression upon you and egregious ways this past year due to the COVID-19 situation and, and everything surrounding that you've seen it be ramped up and you've seen this country change a lot for the absolute worst in a very short period of time now that could be you know grim but it, you, it could also be encouraging if you look at well maybe it, it's not as unrealistic as some of you guys like to say but the people that are so hell-bent on protecting the status quo are those that I find to be useless Um, and they are in the way of liberty because all they do is ensure the power structure of the leftists. What is it that I mean by that? Leftists benefit the most from like, for example, people that that call themselves conservatives and their, their need to protect, as they say, the Republic. You hear that often. They don't seem to understand that their enemy does not operate like they do. And I think that's where a lot of people, what a lot of people lose sight of. Just to clarify, you cannot place your own set of values, um, morals and principles on your enemy. That gets you killed. Okay. Um, uh, Metaphorically, sometimes actually literally uh, it kill. it, It can get you killed. But but that doesn't work, obviously, from a strategic standpoint where you're like, I think of it like this and I, you might think you're the most rational person in the world. So you make the common mistake of assuming that your adversary also would like to play by those those set of standards. And they don't. They showed you this past year the game was rigged. I thought in the summer of 2020, if there was ever going to be a time where large swaths of people finally got it it was going to be that time and to be fair a lot of people did example the same people that had lectured you about standing at home you know you live in a bubble cover your face diaper if you have to go out shut you down you're non-essential all that sort of stuff all it took was an unfortunate situation in minneapolis for them to go completely to the opposite of the thing that they lectured you on and not only that, those people that were in those scrubs that were dancing on TikTok, albeit, but you know, the folks that were really the heroes, the first line, were standing outside, congratulating them, clapping for them, cheering them on, as large amounts of people in tight knit areas were marching, and some, actually, a lot of them 
were burning buildings down <laughs> and stealing stuff in the process. And never once was it assumed that they were spreading the summer of 2020, I thought would have been a time that so many of y'all got it there. This game has been rigged. And your desire to save the Republic has only resulted in your. I don't want to say enslavement. That's a little too harsh. Some ways you can say that, but you get what it is that I'm saying. You're ensuring the power structure of leftists. Now, I get it. Some of you, because whether it be indoctrination, maybe propaganda, you can't see what's what's uh, well, you only can see what's directly in front of you. So people make the mistake of assuming that they are the smartest people in the world. And because they can't see a way something would be done, minus, let's say, the state that controls it right now, then it can't be done. So often when I say that those guys are getting in the way of liberty, what happens is they get deployed in the event that someone says and have finally come to the realization that, well, this existence is a problem. So maybe instead of trying to sit up here and wield the ring of power, I toss the ring of power uh, in the fire so that less people are able to rule over, let's say, this demographic or this side of the country or uh, or multiple ways. Decentralization can have happen in so many ways. Unfortunately, you get these, and I often call them milk, milk toast conservatives, who get in the way, and their purpose seems to be to protect leftists because in the event that I say, well, this needs to be eliminated, what do they say? You're being unrealistic. Well, we never can do that. That's, that's You're going too far. Meanwhile, you have people that have been emboldened that work for the state, albeit New York City, but it's not just going to be just there who have somehow have enough power to dictate for the entire geographical area that no matter you don't have a say in it. You have to be vaccinated if you're going to be indoors gathering with other people. The fact that there's institutions that are that powerful should be a problem to you. And I, I think a lot of people recognize it as a problem. They just don't seem to recognize And I think this more applies to the federal level, but you get what it is that I'm saying. They don't seem to recognize that a lot of what they push for ensures that. So I ask you, as you sit up here and see these celebrities and blue check marks and government officials who are trying to use the state to wield power to shut up folks just because they don't get a jab for something that has a 99 percent survival rate. Why on earth are y'all so hell bent on sharing a government with those people? Serious question. Why? Why are y'all so bent at minimum? Like, that's the line in the sand. These people have made it clear. I mean, it's clear as day. They have no problems using aggression upon you for something with a 99% survival rate. Hell, they they are so twisted. They gaslight to say that you are somehow intruding on them because, well, you may get someone sick. As if that didn't happen prior to the COVID-19, as if we didn't pass viruses and and, uh, bacteria among each other uh, prior to to then that, you know, wrong person get it. They may be sick. No, that just went out the window. These are the people that you want to share a government with. You're so hell bent on sharing a government with. And this was the bold thing that I was referring to earlier. Those milk toast conservatives and even some that call themselves libertarians who are first to jump at those that advocate for decentralization or even abolition. You are in the way of liberty, and as far as I'm concerned, you are my enemy. Take as much time as you need to process that. It's one thing to say, okay, well, the train's going that way, and you want to get off whenever you get off. You want to get off whenever you get off. All right, fine. We can have that conversation when when we get there. But in this day and age, to look at how bloated, coercive, which I mean, those are, I mean, I was, they're, they're like synonymous with state statism, but you get me. State that is doing what it's doing and ha- what it has has done, I mean, over the course of human history. But just because you can only see what's in front of you, let's just even take the last year and some change. You much rather protect the existence of that. Then concede decentralization. Yeah, you're, you're, you're the enemy, bro. You're the enemy. And I'm OK with that 
and drawing that line in the sand because you're in the way. You might think that you're on the opposite side of the leftist, but you're not. You ensure their power structure, albeit some be it. I don't know how many times I said albeit in this in this in this damn video or segment, but fuck, man. How many times must you get beat over the head before you concede that, okay, that's exactly what they're doing, right? Yeah, they might be pissing on you, calling it rain, but at what point do you realize, hmm, that person is literally pissing on me? Why do you want to share a government with with these people? At bare minimum, we should be able to agree. If you value liberty, that doesn't mean that each individual area is is going to look the same. That's not what it is that I'm saying. But at minimum, we should be able to concede that the federal government of all places probably shouldn't be ruling over, I don't know, fucking Texas. That's like the bare minimum. The bare minimum that those assholes that are disconnected Way in Washington should not be making decisions on behalf of other geographical areas. We should at least be able to concede that some would say, well, that's what it was supposed to be. Doesn't matter. We're we're so far removed from that, that it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Like like uh, the great Lysander Spooner. I know people like to appeal to that Constitution so much. It either got us like Lysander Spooner said, either got us the government that we have today or it was powerless in stopping it. Why do you want to share a government? I get it. It freaks some of you guys out because you're used to this. So you put your faith in. It's funny. They say the guys like ourselves, the libertarians, where you be, you believe in people so much. No, 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 no. It's, it's actually the opposite. You're the one that believes in people so much that you've entrusted this mega entity to rule over them. And then you bitch about it every two and four years because the wrong guy gets the control of the power. It's you. I recognize that, look, some people suck. So I don't want to give them some tool that allows them to rule over the largest geographical area possible. I want to minimize that. Doesn't mean we can't have, let's say, a collective agreements that are paid for voluntarily. That doesn't mean that that can't happen. Unfortunately, those milk toast conservatives would have you believe that. Well, we have to keep it this way because China, 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 China. What about the Chinese? Meanwhile, the motherfucker standing right next to you is beating you over the fucking head and you worried about the fucking Chinese. China, China, that's what they say. We well, we can't break this up. What about the Chinese? Motherfucker right next door to him is literally beating them over the fucking face. And you worried about the Chinese. Seriously, guys, if you learn nothing else from me, all I want you to do is reassess what you've been led to believe has to happen, has to exist. If you are, especially in the political realm, and you're not leading with decentralization and or abolition, you are fucking useless in the fight for liberty. You're useless. You're doing nothing but protecting the jobs of absolute criminals and people among the criminal class who have become more and more emboldened to steal from people. Sometimes they say it's in the name of humanitarianism, stealing from people. And now we're to the point to where you have large swaths of, 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 of people who want the federal government to be involved in some sort of implementation of a fucking vaccine mandate in which the entire geographical area of 50 states should be having to abide by. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I don't think it will. But the fact that there's even people that would be emboldened enough. And if they did, to be fair, those beloved cops that you worship, you think that some of them wouldn't enforce that? Well, look at what's happened over the last years with the lockdowns. Absolutely. A lot of them will. Because they don't answer to you. And the minute you realize that, the better off you're going to be. They don't answer to you. 
They don't answer to your beloved constitution that they swore to protect, swore on an oath. They answer to the political and criminal class. That's who they answer to. Hell, when they do act in in error, when they do enforce a law that has absolutely no fucking victim, there's no act of aggression there. It's just completely arbitrary, set by the criminal class to extort you. Well, they say you got to fight it in court. They say, no, it don't blame the cops. Don't do that. Don't blame the actual teeth of the state. Blame the blame the court system. Blame blame uh, the politicians. Blame the legislators. Those legislators don't mean dick. If the people that are the teeth of the state, as I always uh, describe them as, weren't enforcing that shit. It's an uncomfortable situation because what it does is it forces a lot of y'all to have to look at your, your neighbors in a, in a certain light. But as we look at the landscape of this 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 country right now, the fact that there are people who claim to value liberty that get in the way of those that want decentralization and abolition of of these institutions that are corrupt and, and abusive and criminal. Says all that you need to know, you're doing nothing but protecting the status quo all in the name of your beloved republic. You just watched a clip from my podcast for Cannon's sake. Catch us live at 12 p.m. throughout the week over at youtube.com slash youngripper59 and follow us over at odyssey.com slash at youngripper59. If you want to watch the entire video cast after the show is over, just be sure to become a member on the YouTube channel. Of course, the full audio portion of the podcast is available for free on all major digital platforms or just visit forcanonsake.com.